Welcome to this quick training video to introduce the Soraya Archive interface to our new users. If you are watching this video, odds are you are interested in accessing and processing Mirka data. Please note, in this video we will focus on introducing the fundamentals of interacting with the Soraya Archive. It does not address the procedures for sharing access to non-public science data or other access-related queries. For these, Please refer to the Soraya Archive Interface User Guide or mail the Archive Help Desk at archive.ska.ac.za. To get started, we need to point our browser to the Soraya Archive at archive.soraya.ac.za. Here you will be requested to log in. If you are a new user, you need to register before logging in. To our new users, please note the register link at the bottom of the login block. Simply click on this link and follow the instructions. For our returning users, please fill in your credentials and log in. What you will see on your archive entry page will depend very much on your permissions. The very first time you log in, you will only have access to Soraya public data. Soraya has only started to make observational data public but you will already find a playlist of first science data available. To, process, to access non-public observational data, permission must be requested from the relevant principal investigators. When you view the Meerkat archive interface, you will note it consists of three major sections. At the top of the page, you will find the most useful icons. Here is where you find the help link. Clicking on this link, will forward you to the Archive Interface User Guide. This link can be accessed at any time during your archive browsing, and you should find it useful if you need information or assistance. To the right of the help, you will find the logout icon. This will exit your archive interface. And here also, you will find the Advanced Search Hamburger menu. This menu hides and expands the advanced search options to the left of your screen. Alternatively, you can do a quick search. Here, you, all you need to do is start typing in the blue quick search bar at the top and click on the magnifying glass to search. What is important here is that you have two ways of searching through this array archive. The first is by simply typing a string in the blue quick search bar which will then search the archive for any metadata that contains that requested string. For a more focused search, the advanced search menu on the left is used. This menu accommodates a range of search options, which allows you to customize your search and show only the observations you are interested in. Here you will find a number of important IDs. These IDs are used to uniquely identify each proposal as well as each observation per proposal. First, you will see the proposal ID. This ID is assigned to your proposal when it is submitted to Meerkat. It is associated to all the observations for an accepted proposal, and it is unique to that proposal. In addition, you will also be interested in the schedule block IDs. These IDs are unique per observation, and you can use them to track new observations for any of your accepted proposals. So what if you want to save your search options? As an example, let's use the filters in the search menu to the left to find all deep two observations. Those are the observations that we used to generate the first Meerkat images. We will start by adding the deep two proposal ID. Keep an eye on your browser URL, and you will note that as we add this filter, the URL will update to keep the, exa uh, the example selection. And then let's order the observations by setting the archive sort order to show the newest observations first, which will add the next section update to the URL in the browser address bar. If you are satisfied that your selection reflects your purposes, all, I need, all you need to do is simply bookmark this page in your browser, and this will save your search and display results for a quick return later. Once you have selected the observations you wish to inspect and access, the bulk of your interaction will be focused on the data access section, where the observation list summary is displayed. Let's first inspect the metadata information associated with each observation. 
This meter, or complementary information, is available per observation and is displayed by clicking on the arrow to the right of each observation listing. This will expand the concertina menu, showing you all the additional output products that accompany your observation. All observations will have a summary of the observation data under the details item, and we will return to this in a couple of slides. Next, you will find the script log. This displays the progress output as reported by the telescope during the actual observation on Meerkat. It tends to be a very verbose output, but is useful for debugging and tracing unexpected features in the data. For imaging observations, such as our Deep 2 observations, you will also find a first view of FITS image that you can download and view. And to download the image, simply right-click on the link and save the image to your computer. Now let's return to have a look at the observation summary. To view the details, simply click anywhere next to the details name to expose the information. This summary contains high-level metadata information, which typically consists of your array size, you will have center frequency, bandwidth, and number of channels. It will also have the size of your observation data. And you should note this because for Meerkat fuller observations, it is generally fairly large. At the bottom, you will find your more standard output, such as your timestamp series and your associated target observation sequence. Once your evaluation steps are done, and then you have a number of choices for accessing your data. First off, you can choose to access your data directly via CATDAO using a token. Simply click on the CATDAO button, and this will copy the token directly to your clipboard, and all you need to do is post it, uh, paste it into your processing code. Alternatively, you can create and download the standard CASA measurement set. Buttons for the measurement set output option uses color to assist the user. A simple blue link means no measurement set exists. Clicking on this will start the conversion process. As long as the link is orange, the process is running. When the conversion process is done, the button will become the blue clipboard button, indicating that now a measurement set exists, and clicking on this button will give you a copy of the link to download. Should the link turn red, however, it means the process has encountered an error, and the best thing to do here is to contact the archive help desk. Well, in a nutshell, that is it. You now know how to navigate the Surveyor Data Archive and access your data. You are ready to venture into Meerkat data processing. Just remember, there is a lot more information in the Surveyor Archive Interface User Guide, which get updated very regularly. Good luck and enjoy the journey.